Today on episode 104 of Typical Chicago Fans, we have Sinkers and Floaters, the TCF Sports Minute, our media recommendations, Everyday Madden ratings, and the TCF Top 3 of Golf Stuff. Let's roll. Hello and welcome to episode 104 of Typical Chicago Fans. It is me, Boomy, on Twitter at BoomyTCF. Make sure you follow the main page at Typical underscore Chicago. Head over to Facebook, Instagram, type in Typical Typical Chicago Fans. Give those pages a like. Head on over to the YouTube as well. Type in Typical Chicago Fans. Subscribe there for all of our content in video form. Lots of content here coming up because... Two weeks from today, we will, me and Zach will be heading out to Colorado for the All-Star Home Run Derby. So make sure you check out the YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us there. But also make sure you follow the guys that I am joined with tonight on Twitter. That is Zach at ZLiliaTCF and, of course, Maddie at Schools underscore zero one. Boys, episode 104, how we feeling? Feeling good, me and Boomy. Full day of golf. Uh, we yep. 18 holes of golf. I golfed, I think, like 24 holes. Um, it, fellas, it was a weird... I know we always talk about weather at the beginning of the podcast. Um, it was like a weird, like, when the sun came out, it was way too hot. When it was under the clouds, it was decent, but you could always Little feel the chilling. humidity. It was, a, it was a weird day. Yes, very much. And obviously the storms and... Um, you know, all the rain we've had, we went so long without rain and it's been on and off all week. So yeah, definitely, uh, made for some interesting, uh, interesting golf today. That's for sure. Maddie, how you been, man? Good, good boy. Saturday sucked, dude. As humid as it was, you know, you oh. stepped outside, um, you fucking melted. Like your shirt yeah. was soaked right away. That, that, that is when it's just miserable in the middle. Nothing's we'll worse than when way. you when you walk out of the house and you just like you already have like a little layer of sweat already. Yeah. Yeah. You really like showering is just yeah. what's the just point? Suggestion at that point. It's just no, a it, constant state of sweat. Yeah. That that was that was brutal. So it was like you basically stay in the air conditioning as much as you can if you don't have a pool. So weekend kinda yeah. was blah. Absolutely brutal, but hey, summer in Illinois, man, I, we're pretty used to it by now. But yeah, um, sure, yeah, absolutely, right. <laughs> yeah. So we'll keep telling ourselves anyway. Uh, but let's jump into it. We have sinkers and floaters. My sinker is cows. Um, apparently, cow. Uh, you guys know, like the big trucks on the interstate that haul cattle and stuff that you can kind of like see them through the holes and stuff. Uh, well, apparently. One uh, had a little bit of a rollover on Interstate 64 in West Virginia, and now all of the cows are loose. Um, I'm not exactly sure how many, but apparently a ton of the cows that were in there, I don't think any of them were injured or or dead or anything, but um, when it rolled over, it opened up and all these cows got loose. So if you're out in Virginia, West Virginia more specifically, be careful driving on the road because there actually might be a cow out in the middle of the interstate. You don't want to hit one of those. uh, you know, flying down the highway. So keep your eyes open if you're in West Virginia for cattle on the road. That would be an interesting should, thing should, to pass on the interstate. Yeah. Should probably insert the uh, cow tipping clip from Tommy Boy here, Zach. You know, like, <laughs> yes. mix it right into the episode because that's taking it to a whole new level. <laughs> Just dump I actually went to high school with a kid who hit a cow with his car, and it like absolutely uh, totaled uh, his car. I could only imagine what are those things weigh about. 3,500 pounds? Yeah, I mean, anywhere oh from probably 2,000 to 3,000 pounds. Yeah, know. full-grown cattle. God, oh, probably yeah. laughing at me right now. I just told, pulled that number out of my ass. How much do they weigh? Let's Google that here. I'll I'm Google sure. that while, the, uh, while we go on to the next uh, the next. Series. My guess is somewhere between. I'm curious on how much the average cow weighs. 1,000 and 1,500 pounds is my guess. I'm going to go with 1,800 pounds. I said 3,500. <sighs> Well, you guys are you guys were closer ahead. on females. I'm over on males, but I would have been I wasn't as over as I thought I was gonna be. So males really? male bulls male bulls average twenty four hundred pounds. Jeez, female man. cows at female cows average sixteen. And this is according to the first result on a Google search. So it's pretty Holy legit. hell. Imagine hitting that doing like seventy. That's humongous. Yeah. That's, well, I mean, yeah. you see what deer you can see what a deer does to a car, dude. It oh yeah. Nasty there. <laughs> add add two thousand pounds of that. You know? Yeah, seriously. 
Well, fellas, my sinker is fireworks. I know it's almost July 4th. Everyone loves fireworks. I'm not a fan of fireworks. Um, nope. I live in town now, and I was kind of close to the fireworks, and it's one of those things. Uh, I, I don't know. I've just I've you never been a fan of them. them yeah, it, I don't know. Not that Do big of a fan of, of things that just go up in the air and blow up. I don't know. And they're expensive as all hell, too. Yeah, so it was cool to watch from the backyard for like five minutes. Me and Boomy yeah. went inside, and then it was just a loud noise. Yeah, I, I, I don't I feel like I probably thing. have a lot of haters. I'm going to have a lot of haters on this, but I'm just not a fan of fireworks. I'm with you, man. Like I said, you've seen one fireworks show. You've seen them all. They just don't do it for me. Um, flip side. It buys me like one hour of entertainment. Uh, we have a fireworks <laughs> show that my kid can watch, so he loves Valid. it. So that, uh, the, the distraction on that end of things is fantastic. So I'm going to throw that out. But I'm thing, also going to say, I, I bet there's a lot of uh, children who don't like them too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely, definitely is. But you're definitely. right. Definitely. You're right, man. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to be selfish here, Zach. I'm just going to tell you that right I'm, now. I'm just being I'm annoyed. Concerned about my own happiness here on this one. Um, outside of that. I'm typically with you. I'm typically just kind of blah on fireworks. This year we're going to be out of town um, and we're going to be sitting on a lake watching them. So I'm, that, I'm curious how that's going to be. That that's might be a little be bit fun. different. If, if I don't have to yeah. be involved in like the the process oh, of yeah. it, I can and we're I can doing, sit in the lake. Like, I can sit in the lake, yeah, drink a beer. Like the, I'm fine with it. It's, there's a there's a big show over the lake. Um, it's like, like on the other side of the lake, so it's not like we're even it's not blowing off next to us. It's just like right. one of the big shows. That'll be fun. No, it's I like I said, I just haven't seen anything new. Like I will give it like where the town my wife I'm with is you, from. Boomy. I'm with you, Boomy. They do like this very small town my wife was from, they do a very good job. They put on like an hour long show for you know, a town of, you know, maybe twelve hundred people. Um, but and like I've been to them at Disney, that it was cool. Disney to see World them. are pretty cool. Yeah. Like it's cool, it's just meh. I'll pass. Maddie, what's your big, sinker? Boomy's big on the castle. He wants to, uh, you know, do the old big magical castle, kiss yeah. at the castle. Big, big castle. castle. Here. <laughs> uh, my sinker is uh, and, and staying with the uh, the castles and, and romance. I'm going to go to flowers, uh, but more specifically planting them. Um, they're extremely expensive, uh, boys, just so you know, when you start getting into uh, potted plants and uh, putting flowers up, hanging baskets, all this stuff. It's a really good way to piss through like three hundred dollars, just like oh, yeah. poof, gone. When you start getting like the uh, the dirt, the you know the all the all the all the plants themselves start racking up, and it doesn't not it, it takes a lot to get you know just to fill up one little pot. You so you'd be amazed. So that stuff's super expensive. expensive. Then you got the maintenance too, and like constantly watering. So it's like your water bill triples just because you're out there like acting like a dope thief, you know, watering plants. <laughs> relaxing ass chore not gonna lie super relaxing especially with the podcast on preferably one of ours put that on while you're yes. out there watering flowers maybe we'll do some what is that uh the a S asmr is that what that is we'll do some watering <laughs> uh, some flower watering uh asmr for, for our listeners that's what people now, tune in for now now you are watering the plants now you move on to it's the other a, plant the thirsty little flower is taking a yeah. large <laughs> drink <laughs> I it's pretty much, it's pretty much up, just I for Maddie. I, well, it'll just be for Maddie. Yeah. No, I usually I I'm out there listening to like some ridiculous music or uh, someone swearing like crazy on a podcast. It's that's right up my alley for watering flowers. I I hand to God, I think I've killed every plant that I've ever planted. So I, <laughs> I no green thumb. I did grow peppers last year. They were good, but that's about the only thing I've managed to keep alive. Everything else. Color me shocked. Oh, dude, I. Because I forget to water them for like six weeks straight, and then I'm like, oh, everything's dead. It takes about six days straight, and then you're done. Yeah. By then, I'm just like, ah, screw it. I'll cut my losses and move on. My floater, on the other hand, is completely unrelated, and that is Yogi Berra. Obviously, the man has a bajillion <laughs> sayings. Yeah, not anywhere nearly related to gardening, but shout out Yogi Berra. He um, it was announced that he will be getting a 55-cent stamp in his honor, so – for all you stamp collectors out there, I, I always feel like people talk when we were younger about people collecting stamps. I've never met anyone that collects stamps. Nor nope. would you want to. No. And 
<laughs> but hey, Yogi, he does look some up. He's got some like of the best one liners in in the in so the So is history. it like is it like just in a certain area, or we can all I get think it? I, no, I think he's from like Connecticut or something, and it's somewhere being released. I don't know if you can get him here. I don't know that much about stamps. I don't know the last time I bought a stamp. I want to be on a stamp. Yeah, I mean, we could get a we should get a TCF one. There we go. Yeah, um, but I, I know mean, mail. I know a couple of mail carriers, so maybe they can uh, you know get, get it going for us. There we go. Put my put our floater, name in the My floater kind of goes off what Maddie was saying. Knowing somebody who has a pool, not having a pool, yep, knowing absolutely. somebody that has a pool. My sister has a pool. It's like a boat. Oh yeah, I don't want to have the pool, but I would love to visit the pool. Yep, I've got I, it. I don't made want the boat. Life. I want to ride on someone else's boat. I want. Yep. I don't want the pool. I want to swim. Yes, it's like I don't want <laughs> to. Like, oh, it's it's warm out. Oh, I'll go over to my sister's house. I'll yeah. go to the pool yep. for a little bit, and then I'll come home, and I don't have to worry about cleaning the pool. Yep. I've got it made. My sister has a pool. My sister-in-law has a pool. My father-in-law has a pool. Zach's sister has a pool. I know enough people that have pools. I never have to get one. And the way that I keep greenery alive, I shouldn't get a pool because it'll end up looking like those disgusting ones I see on TikTok all the time that have, like, things growing in the bottom of them. So stay away from the pool. Yeah, that that does not sound fun to clean up. So that's why I'm saying mm-hmm. I, would, I would love to – Go to the pool, have some fun, but then go home to my house that does not have a pool. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> I don't blame you at all. Uh, mine, boys, uh, got into the College World Series here over the weekend and late last week, and uh, it's exciting. The games were nuts. The, the the games are crazy. There's, it's usually uh, everything's been really tight. There's walk off games. There's Fan bases are getting nuts. The games are intense. There's really good hitting, timely hitting. Um, you know, the aluminum bat, the sound of that just is, it gets you pumped up as much as anything. Um, you got the drama with North Carolina State, you know, and the COVID. And they, what they a had joke. To, uh, they, Boomy, they can got, I hear that uh, one more time, boom. please? Bing! Yeah, I'll give you 6.1. Yeah, it wasn't my best effort, but yeah, you got um, 5.4. So yeah, that was not very good. And oh, I, fine. I know we were going to. No more pings for you. I know we were going we to talk about it going into the uh, the sportsman anyway. So, boys, what, what, what was your take on the uh, on the action in it, Omaha? It's exciting because uh, a lead can go away so quickly, especially with the aluminum bats, because those balls fly out of that stadium. Yeah, it um, jumps. It unfortunately, jumps. the heat like, too in the Midwest like that. It just like it does here. Oh, it's it so damn awesome. hot. It's awesome. And it to feels watch. like when when baseball is like hot, it's just like there's always runs. You know. But unfortunately, yeah. NC State was. Did they get disqualified? How did that work? It was ruled a no contest. So they didn't, they didn't have enough right. guys. That was um, that was tough. Vanderbilt yeah. moves on. Vanderbilt uh, barely in it. Uh, they were they were down to their last out. Nobody on base. Probably one of the best pitchers in college baseball, and they somehow moved on. Yeah, they, that was insane. Were they string together like four or five hits? Oh, it was an error. It reached on an error. Um, and then so he advanced to second, and I think there was a hit, and then they won on a pass ball. I watched that game live. That was f- so much fun to watch. Insane. But yeah, NC State <laughs> got screwed, man. I feel bad. And they gave Vanderbilt a run on, what was that, Friday? Um when they were down, they had 13 guys that were able to play their bottom three of their bottom four hitters either didn't have a batting average because they haven't got a bat this year, or they had a zero batting average because they haven't got a hit all year. And their <laughs> other, the other one of those that wasn't the three or four, his batting average was like 167. And they still only lost to one of the best teams in college baseball, three to one. And Mississippi State is good. That Mississippi State Texas game. Um, that was, uh, I think that was also on Friday, but the one that, um, they hit the through on home run in the top of the ninth, that game was incredible. But I do think they, they're, I, I truly think that they're down to the two best teams for the finals. And that's always a good thing to see. Vanderbilt's obviously loaded, you know, two of the best pitchers in baseball, Mississippi state's offense can just go. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it's been, they're, fun. they've it's been clutch as well too. Yes, Mississippi state's exactly. been so so clutch, dude. It's like 
every time they need a big hit, they're getting exactly what they need. They're getting big doubles. They got like they got the big homer, like you said. You know, their 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 bullpen's been nasty too. So, you know, that, that team's been really fun to watch. Um, you can kind of say the same back, thing with Vanderbilt too. So that's going to be an exciting series. Right. Going back to the Vanderbilt NC State thing too, real quick. And I know a lot of people are like quick to like defend uh, and you know back up NC State and everything. I'm also, if I'm Vanderbilt, I'm not apologizing for anything. No, nope. so, sorry, no, you, sorry, you not gotta sorry. You got to keep moving. It, it's it's <laughs> yeah, unfortunate, it's but, yeah. it's unfortunate, but you still yeah. got to go win a college world series. Yeah, it's like the insert the clueless gift where she's driving and goes, "My bad," you know. Yeah, uh, it's just <laughs> I, I don't. I, I wouldn't feel bad. I'm sorry. 100. percent It's been incredible. It's great to have the college world series back. Obviously, after losing it last year, um, but right. yeah, the, and it's. It's really cool, you know, how much that, you know, the sport is being promoted on Twitter. I found some great Twitter accounts. Barstool is covering it. I mean, it's cool that I've always been a big college baseball fan, and it seems like it's getting increasingly bigger and bigger each year, which is always good to see, get, you know, yeah. that exposure that comes I'd, I'd really like to get out there. I've always wanted to, and I never have. It's, it's, a little it's, TCS now it's looking, trip? I'm definitely TCS down trip for at that. Some point. It's one of those things, too, where it's just going to get bigger and bigger every year the more eyes get on it, too. No, 100%. 100%. But – that was a good transition into our TCF Sports Minute. That was our first part of it. Let's jump into the Cubbies. They dropped three of four in Los Angeles, but their one win of the series comes off of a combined no-hitter. Um, Zach Davies, Andrew Chafin, Craig Kimbrell, and was it Tapera was the other one that mm-hmm. was involved in that? Yes. So combined no-hitter, but, I mean – it's still not great dropping three of four. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Dodgers are good. They're in second place. Not much the offense. Just not much offense in the three losses. And where we're sitting at right now, three games out of first place, and the Brewers are kind of rolling. But huge series starting today. Uh, Cubs and Brewers need to pick up, you know, at least in two. In Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No Rizzo now, it sounds like, too. Yeah, yeah that's not that's good. Gathering. Not good. The but Cubs um, have just had injuries all season. Same with the White Sox. Yep. Well, this is where you need another. You need somebody to step up, and maybe you know if you had a guy like Victor Caratini along with the U Darvish, and you didn't make a certain trade, um, you know Victor Caratini could go play first. You're base, telling me, Chris Matt? Bryant could go play you're first telling base, me. And, you know, and then you'd have U Darvish too, and everybody wins, and there, awesome. you got your starting pitcher. Just saying, I, I don't know, but you know what? We wouldn't have got that no hitter though without Zach Davies. True. Yep. True, true, Boomy. <laughs> or I don't know, man. It's frustrating. Five and the half ERA is... either on the season. Yeah, man, you're not wrong. But, but it's, it's a like... good team. That's what you can say. It's a good team. They lost to a good. It's team. a good team, and it's it's a yes. The Dodgers, you you'd like you're not going to sweep them every time you, you face them like you did earlier. So we we'll love take that to, one when you can get we'll it. Love to split the series, but it was a tough game. Uh, Clayton Kershaw. Saturday, Saturday night best, was a tough game. Well, nah, Clayton Saturday Kershaw, was I think it was one of his best starts since 2018. Yeah. I uh, yeah, he had, what, 13 strikeouts, something like that. So he had a ridiculous number of strikeouts tonight. I don't know. Like, I think he had, like, it was, 13 uh, Saturday night, strikeouts. I thought it was 13, but you might, it might have been even more. Um, Saturday night was rough, though, too. Uh, Hayward Homer, I don't know what the hell happened. That was such a weird call there. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I thought you were going to take the lead there. That was a <laughs> tough like, overturn of a home run. Let's just say it, that. It really was. I, it was It was an awkward and play. I, I have I, not I, seen you know, one but, good angle of that ball. No. It was, Every it was a, angle it was, they show was the lefty, awesome. The left-handed hitter slicing it down the line like that, too. It's always going to create a weird angle. The ball's going to yeah. be spinning awkwardly, too. It's just like, yeah. It's like, the frustrating thing with the Cubs, and it's been like this for a while, is the feast or famine aspect to the offense. Like, sometimes it's there, and they can give you six, seven runs, and then there's, you know, you're trying to survive on one or two, and it's like with the pitching staff yeah. the way it is, you got to provide tough. these guys with more offense, man. It's just tough. Yeah. Uh, it's basically, but what you can say is it was a tough series against a good team. Move on. But we got to – I mean, this is a big series. I think the – um, the Brewers are two games up in the division. Three. Three, Three games yeah, up. Yeah. So, and Javi Baez might be having the worst month of his career. He stinks right now. <laughs> well, it, it, as he goes, the offense goes, you can see, because he was good in yeah. May, and the Cubs kicked ass in May. He sucked in June. He sucked in April. Oh, crying out loud. He bad. Bad, bad. He, he, by the way, Chris, Chris, Bryant, Chris Bryant's really had a rough June, too, but don't, mm-hmm. don't, don't yeah. lose sight of that one. 
You're not wrong. Socks pick up. There's, 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 nobody, there's, there's nobody in the Cubs offense right now that's really hot. And yeah, don't forget the Brewers just did get done playing the Rockies. It's not like they're playing a juggernaut. So. Yeah, I don't know. Schedule even out. Yep, absolutely. The White Sox uh, drop two of three this weekend to a Mariners team that is um, not great, but not, you know, bad either. They're pretty go Yeah, crappy. that's a good way to put it. But they still hold a two and a half game lead on the Indians. Um, do you guys think that help is coming? I mean, obviously, we've talked about, you know, Eloy coming back earlier than, than maybe expected. Um, you know, do you think? You got to feel like, you know, we've talked a million times about the Cubs, you know, what they need at the deadline. You got to feel that the White Sox are going to go do something, pick up. I mean, well, I don't think that they're done right Bob now. Nightingale, Bob Nightingale is hinting today that they were uh, going what after a tweet. Escobar from the, the dime. <laughs> Wasn't it? What the, a the worded White tweet. He's like, he's like, oh, uh, Escobar has had this hit, blah, blah, blah. And he's going to go to the White the Sox soon. Yeah. <laughs> just in the Wild. middle of a tweet about him getting a hit. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, crazy. Way. Absolutely crazy. The soon to be White Sox or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Very, very awkward tweet, but I, I don't know. That's a guy you wouldn't you wouldn't be surprised he goes there. Uh, Frazier from uh, the Pirates could be another option as well. Um, you know they're gonna make a move. They've got a chance to win a World Series. They've got the uh they've got the pop the you know the prospect pool to to deal from without touching their major league roster. Get some guys healthy, supplement it with a couple of trades here and there. Maybe uh, Tony Larusa can stop making weird decisions. <laughs> yeah, they can, both they can, keep, playing well. way. They can keep playing well until they get Robert back. They're going to get Eloy back. Hopefully, Kopech back. Like they, they have a lot. They have a lot. Yeah, it sounds like Kopech back, back if they can, back too. if they can just kind of keep it moving for the next month or two. Yeah, yeah probably the division kind of stinks too. So yeah, that helps. That helps a lot. We're about two and a half weeks away to finding out, like, the Robert timeline. They said that when they sent him to Arizona that they were going to give him four weeks, reevaluate after that. So that's probably coming down the pipeline here in a couple weeks. So, um, you know, they'll have a little bit more. Or not, not Robert, um, that was Eloy. And then Robert, obviously, will come a little bit after that, I think. So, uh, you know, positive uh, stuff for the White Sox. Like I said, I, I, and I think, Matt, you might even brought up Joey Gallo. Could you imagine Joey Gallo in this lineup? Uh, it would balance out their lineup because we all know how well they hit the left-handed pitchers. The way he's, you know, coming from the left side, the way he just has some ridiculous power against right-handed pitching. He's he hit just, a bomb today too in the first inning, but it, it, he'd be he'd be a good fit there. Um, you know, that's, oh yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it'd take a lot. It's to another get guy. It's another guy though that you know. It's another DH more than anything. I think they need somebody who can actually play the field a little bit too. The White Sox are in a good spot. Let's just say that. Yeah, I mean, the starting pitching with Lance Lynn and Giolito kind of and Rodon at the, the front of your front of your rotation, the way they've been this year, it's going to take you to a lot of wins as it is. Like you said, get, get an arm like Kopech there. You know, Liam Hendricks, I think, is a really, really good pitcher. I don't, I don't know necessarily if they agree the way they're getting. It seems like they're using him very weirdly, but, you know, La Russa's doing what he does. <laughs> Moving to the NBA, uh, the Phoenix Suns take a 3-1 series lead. I think over. that series is over. I know it's, it's gotta crazy be. to say. It's not, it's not crazy to say, but, like, the Suns are so Chris good. Chris Paul's playing like a man possessed right now. Yeah. The, the Clippers and, not playing well. Paul George just can't make clutch free throws, and Kawhi Leonard will not be back in this playoff. No. A report no, came out Kawhi today that he's no. not a fan of the the way he is medically being treated. I mean, he, he sits in the sky. He sits in like a box. He yeah. doesn't sit on the sideline. Yeah, there's something it's weird going on. It's so weird, weird dude. dude. Isn't that wild? Like that's not really talked about that much. He's a different cat, Very man. Different. He's he's a strange guy. But yeah, that series, I think, amazing is over. player, amazing player. But yeah. It's the, the cool thing to me with the Suns is like there's so many guys on that team. Like DeAndre Ayton, obviously, he was what, 2018? And like he was a great college player, didn't do a ton his first two years in the league. And now he's 22 I mean, he's got guys, years old. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but he's got guys like Chris Paul and Devin Booker getting the ball, and he's feasting inside. He's, he's, he's a Chris Paul, Chris Paul said he wants, thing, to get, yeah. he wants to get Ayton paid. 
Oh, he's going he to. He is going to. And Devin Booker is one of the five best shooters, might be one of the top five players in the game right now. He's, you know, having his moment. And then even like guys who, and I will still say, campaign was an absolute bum when he was a bull. And now he's going out and scoring like 20 points a game. Get out of That's here, dude. That's unbelievable. He stunk when he was with the Bulls. And now that he's in the Western Conference. Unbelievable. Fight. Campaign of all people. I That blows yeah. my mind. Wild to see that guy about uh, to be in the NBA taking finals. over the stage. In the he NBA would go like, it felt like he would take weeks and not score 26 he's points. He's about and he had to be in the NBA, NBA Finals. He's, they might win it. Yeah. He's gonna, because, talk about another guy who's going to get paid after this season. The, uh, the Bucks take a 2-1 Someone's going to throw a bunch of money at him. The Bucks take a 2-1 lead. And what do you think about the Bucks up against this Phoenix Suns team? I, I still think Atlanta is... Yeah, I'm not saying that shot. series is over at all. I'm not saying that series is over bad at all. This injury for uh, Trey is, though, because that ankle, he did not play well when he came back. And if that's if that's a serious injury, then that I that mean, that series is done. He goes out and gives you 35 points. Bogdanovich had eight in 35 minutes of play. John Collins had 13. He's had a pretty good playoff. Clint Capella only had eight. And then their next – after Trey Young, their next leading scorer was Gallinari off the bench with 18. It's like you guys got to give him some help. Like he, he scored 35 points. Like he can't score 110 by himself. Like you got to help the kid out somewhere. And they, they just didn't have it tonight. And I, Milwaukee looks really good right now. It's a must Giannis win. 33. It's a must win game four. Oh, 100%. Chris Middleton at 38. If Chris Middleton's going to give you 38, you ain't winning that series, Atlanta. I hate to break it to you. Bobby Portis off the bench. Bum-ass Bobby Portis. 15 points in 16 minutes. <laughs> Bobby I mean, Portis. Wow. I mean, the, the, former, we got some, the former bowl tour, man. Yeah. We're going to have like a – we're going to have an NBA Finals with some former bowls in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we will. Brooke Lopez, Big too. Time. Oh, no, it was, we didn't have Brooke. We had uh, Robin, right? Mm -hmm. We had his brother. Yep. yep. Either way. Um, moving into hockey, um, for the first time in what feels like forever, we'll have a Canadian team in the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, but unfortunately, what is there, 5%, 10% fans? Silly Canada. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not it, going to matter it, either, so. Is is Tampa gonna blow their doors off or what, Matt? I well, I've been wrong literally every series of the entire playoffs. <laughs> I think I've picked the I think I've picked the exact loser in each series starting from the first round this year. It's been a rough one, uh, but no, you'll have I, I that. You'll think, have that. I think Tampa is way way better, and I, right. I can't imagine this run is gonna last forever for, for Montreal. So I'm going to go put my uh, my future in for Montreal to win this thing. But if Carey Price, I mean, he's had some insane games. I mean, I think Tampa's better. I mean, obviously, I think they're much better than uh, Vegas. But, I mean, he's going to have to play as out of his mind Kucherov every is healthy, game. If you, have, if you see a game Kucherov sets, that, that might be a game that if you're going to gamble uh, on Montreal, I might take it there. Because that guy's such a difference maker offensively. But, I mean – you know, what you've seen in the back end with, with Price and then, you know, Shea Weber's kind of played, you know, like he used to, you know, like he did was, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago. It's in stretches of play. And, you know, Victor has going to do the same thing for Tampa. For? Uh, Nashville. He that went over that P.K. Subban. He was dealt for Subban. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of people thought Montreal was foolish for the trade, but worked out well for them I was say it's working out so we may what, matt do you know how many what the streak is at the last time a canadian team won the stanley cup uh it was montreal um in 93 in i believe oh 93. i believe it's 93 yeah Jeez. patrick Watt. patrick Watt took him on a run uh, that's right pretty, I sure was, pretty sure it was 93 well, hopefully it's another year because I'm definitely – I don't even like Tampa Bay, but I definitely don't like anything about Montreal. It's one of the least favorite cities I've ever been to. I hope they get swept. So Never been Go there. Ahead. Huge strip club city, though, from what I hear. Montreal, well, we Tampa, never... strip club. The battle of strip clubs. Yeah, this is definitely America, like – America versus Canada's strip club capital. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we were there when I was like – That's true. 12 or 13. It is. And what – 
Um, what's uh, Mark Davis, the Raiders owner? He's gonna be he's gonna be in attendance. You can guarantee that one for sure. Bouncing city to city. Sounds fun. We were in Montreal when I was like twelve, and it was the absolute worst. They still speak French there. It was miserable. You can't even you don't even know what the road signs mean. So that was before Boomy. Yeah. Boomy bases his uh, like if he doesn't like your team or not of if he enjoyed your city. Oh, thousand percent. <laughs> Philadelphia, burn it to the ground. I hate everyone there. Well, how the hell are you a Packer fan then? Green Bay is a lovely city. Have some respect <laughs> for the lovely people of Northern Wisconsin. All right. <laughs> The town? They're, 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 they're basically Canadians, all right? They're super nice. <laughs> is, that a, is that a town, a village? <laughs> it's a community, all right? <laughs> Let's move on. We got our segments, media recommendations, which could be uh, music, podcast, video game, movie, TV show, whatever we got. I'm going to start us off. Um, I've talked about this a couple times. I'm a little bit of a metalhead, and one of my favorite bands released an album. Um, it's a little on the lighter side, so even if you just kind of like rock music and you know, you're know you not crazy about the, the heavy screamo stuff, uh, but a band called Beartooth um, released an album this week. Um, I can't – I have to have to look here real quick. Um, but it's definitely a little bit different compared to some of the stuff I listen to. Um, it's not as screamy as, as some of the other stuff, but it's an incredible album. One of the, and I will admit when albums have a bunch of skips, this album I listened to the other day, um, the album is called Below, by the way, and uh, no skips on it. Very, very good album. So check out uh, the album Below by the band Beartooth. I love it. I, have, I don't know what to say about that. Um, we'll listen to it on the way to Colorado. You'll have to give me a, a review of it, Zach. Boomy, am I gonna? I'm gonna break your heart right here on the uh, the podcast. If you play that album, I will put headphones on. I'm gonna <laughs> steal your headphones when we're at a gas station and make you listen to it till the album's over. I'm gonna have to give that a no. Um, my media recommendation is uh, it's the Morale Clubhouse. So um, Maddie was in on one of these. Uh, I think it's like every Wednesday or is it Tuesday? Uh I think it was Tuesday when I, it's kinda, I, I just it's got kinda the whenever. notification on my phone. Yeah, that it's kind of whenever. It I'm like, it's like around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, usually Tuesday, Wednesdays. Um, Fred does a uh, – Dom, he does a clubhouse where he has people come in, ask questions. He, you know, he answers the questions. He, uh, he talks about the Cubs, the situation, just – does some uh, just talk, talks about everything that is uh, the Dom and what he, he kind of um, is, is thinking throughout the games and throughout the series. Uh, and our guy Maddie was on uh, one of them asking a question. Great question. Um, so make sure you check that out. It's on Spotify. Um, and it's on Apple. It's the Morale Clubhouse. It's just kind of like they put it out the next day. Um, so if you want to listen to that, if you can't get on the clubhouse, make sure you check that out. Matty, what do you got for gonna, us? You, got, you guys know I spend most sports. There's usually like a, a Disney YouTube show that's on my on my TV because of my kid. This week, uh, it was Disney Plus has a new movie out there called Luca. Good movie, dude. Really, really, really good movie. Uh, what was it called? It's about these. It's called Luca. It's about these oh, Italian Luca. kids, but they are uh, they're like sea monsters. But when they come out of the water, they're like good sea monsters. But when they come out of the water, they turn into human. So then they can like interact and stuff like that. And well, one of them wants to go to wants to go to school and start learning and stuff. But then they're also like into like these crazy adventures. They're like trying to ride Vespas and shit. Good movie. Uh, so I think yeah, my nephew good watched it this weekend. Yeah, top notch movie. It's Pixar too, so they always do uh, pretty good stuff. So yeah, I would definitely give a recommendation. To that, if you got kids and you need to entertain them and yourself for 90 minutes. Maddie, did you watch the uh, the Girl and the Dragon movie that was on Disney Plus? The Last Dragon or something? No, 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 no. no. See, we, we get about seven. We get about seven or eight cracks in a movie, um, and it's all the same one. So when we get a new one, it's a, it's a big deal in this house. It's ah. like we just are on a cycle. Um, we got the Monsters Inc. and uh, the Monsters University, the the Cars, the Toy Story, 
you know, yada yada. All that it was stuff. A solid movie. Movie, so. Uh Moana is a good movie. That's another good one yep. in the rotation heavily. Um the Despicable Me movies are in there too. But yeah, so it's like once we get a new one, it's kind of a big deal. Good deal. Good deal, man. Can't go wrong with Disney Plus movies. That's no, for, it, no. a little mindless it's really it it's making a lot of things in life easier, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely, definitely. Let's move on. We have our everyday Madden ratings. We each have one, and I'm going to let Maddie get us started here. Uh, all right. I had to buy some new cabinets for my yeah. garage here recently. I wanted to put, like, just, uh, you know, get some storage, make it, clean it up in the garage, keep it a little more organized, create some more room. So I bought some cabinets. Well, I had to assemble said cabinets, get them mounted on the walls and stuff, too. So it's been a giant process. So mine is assembling furniture, that type of stuff. Tables, cabinets, shelves. You know, the shit you get from Target that you got. It comes in a thin box that's this big, but then it turns into a fucking something that's this big. Because, you know, everything is like parts are down to that size. You just got to start assembling. So all that stuff. So give me your Madden rating on that. Mine, I'm going to say, is probably upwards of... Uh, 53 as i just am well aware you guys know i have a child i swear a lot around that child when i'm assembling furniture though because it's so goddamn frustrating we got these shitty little screws they give you a shitty little allen wrench they give you like instructions that are in 13 different languages you got to flip it over to get to your language but then you get to the next page you got to turn it rotate it and then flip it three more times to get back to the english for step two it's an absolute <laughs> just a, it's a joke and it's so frustrating doing this stuff so i get I get out of control, you know, I don't, I lose my focus. Things take way longer than they should. So I'm going to give myself like a 40, 46. I'm going to go I'm with gonna... a 50 because I, I, I can do it, but I don't want to do it. Yeah. If I put yeah. my mind to it, I could probably, could probably do it. But do I want to? No. I'm with you, man. I'm like a 32 because I got, I can do it. I just I lose my patience with it very fast. I have fat fingers and they. Don't I was gonna really say your properly. sausage fingers probably are just yeah for that stuff. Especially if it's too small, like I'm just that piece is just not going in. And what happens is is like it's a project that should maybe take me like an hour, and then I get pissed with it, so I'll leave it sitting there, <laughs> and then I'll come back to it like and the then next boom, day. We'll break it. And then it turns into like a four day adventure and then there's extra parts and pieces. And I, I, I can see you going king. I can never build stuff. something. Start smashing it. Boom. Boom. I, I just get like, <laughs> I just want to break <laughs> things because it's just, it's so fresh. I would, I would pay an absorbent amount of money just to have someone just put it together for me. Like, uh, everything I've ever I'm built like you. that, I'm with you on that. It's also never been stable. Like it's all wobbly and shit. Like, <laughs> Just build it, make it sturdy, because I'm going to break something. And you know, there's always screws you miss and shit. Like, oh, yeah. Like, Why do I have an extra up? bag of screws? <laughs> this yeah, can't then, you look, then you look at it and you go, well, it doesn't look like it's going to fall apart, so I think we're good. But it also helps because my head's a little crooked, so when I look <laughs> at some things, if I look at it correctly and I just got to oh, tilt my man. head to one way, and then it all looks fine, so it, it, it works in the end. It's just the, the quality's not there. He's basically a hockey goon. He just described, you know, sausage fingers, the big yeah. odd shaped head. You know, Never played hockey, hockey in his life. <laughs> Not true. Would have been a perfect third liner. Would have been a perfect third liner. There you go. Well, yeah. mine, my everyday man rating is getting the mail. Just saying, like everyday remembering to get the mail. Like I, I live by myself. Sometimes it gets to be about nine thirty ten. It's like, well, I forgot to go get the mail. I have to go get it. Or even the next morning, it's like, oh, forgot to get the mail yesterday. Uh, I'm going to go with like a 45. I'm a 45. I'm bad. I'm not good at this. Me and my wife live here, and there will go days with forgetting to get the mail. Whatever happened to the days where like the mail would go right th through the door? That's a good question, Zach. We don't have mail slots. I would, slots in years. I would love that. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I'm probably like I, I said. Then it builds up on your front porch, dude. It's bad. Like our, we've had <laughs> no, 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 problems no, no. Like, where we forget out. so much, and then it, like it's just like comically bulging out of the mailbox, and like I just mean like those entryway porches. You know what I mean? Yeah, those yeah, slots. Yeah, We're yeah. always in like an entry area. I'm gonna go um, like thirty-seven. Ooh. All right. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give myself. 
What would you guys say Tom Brady is in Madden? Is he like a 96, 97? Probably like a 90, maybe. 93 with his age. Okay, so I'm probably like a 93. Um, however, behind every Tom Brady, there's a Bill Belichick. And my yeah, kid is obsessed with you. the mailman. Oh, He's obsessed I with see. the mailman. So every day, dude, the mailman comes. I have we have to stop lunch as soon as you hear the mail truck. The kid's running out the front door to go say hi to James. We're on a first name basis with James. Shout out James, great mailman. Um, literally, so we got to go get it every day. So I, it's it's I, I'm a legend because I have good coaching around me. I'm happy to hear that you have a good relationship with your mailman because I hate my mail lady with a passion. Oh, our guy's the best, dude. James is James. She's the, best. the worst. We literally, so, like, we have garbage gets, like, picked up, like, Wednesday morning. So, we'll put it out, like, right near the garbage can or by the mailbox or whatever, okay? So, we leave it there. They take it. I come back. The literally, like, the, the garbage guys accidentally put it in, like, next, like, right next to the mailbox. You could still get in the mailbox. She left a handwritten note that was, like, please don't put anything in front of the mailbox. I'm, like, first of all, I didn't put it there. Second of all... It wasn't even in your way. Quit complaining. And then, like, she's she she's is just like, pissed because he hadn't picked up the mail in three weeks, so she had to uh, jam it all in there. In the first besides time. the point, okay? <laughs> and then, like, we get we live out in the country. We get some pretty bad snowstorms. Like, if it's even remotely close, she just doesn't deliver our mail for like three days. And like, our driveway is usually plowed, or like at least you can get to the mailbox because it's right at the end of the driveway. She just will like take a week of absence. And just not deliver our mail. I'm like, that's not how this works, lady. Well, I, I, I said to, I said to give your Madden rating, not your mail person. Yeah. Oh, if it was her Madden rating, she'd be a <laughs> negative seven. She stinks. All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right, mine. And I may have asked this before. Sorry, I was a little heated. Mail, the mail lady gets me. No way. Bothered clearly. She, no, she, the she, opposite she, she, of it. The opposite of it. Um, and I might have asked this, so you can tell me if I have, I have a backup. Anything electrical work in your house? One. Zach, I'm afraid Zach I think was probably good. I'm, I'm afraid zero. of it because I feel like I'm going to set something on fire, dude. I'm, probably I'm zero. not even afraid about that. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm zero. I don't even, don't even think about no. it. Zero. I refuse to. Really? I oh, will yeah. not. Yeah. The only thing I've ever done is like, Patched up like wires on my, uh, um, like like my garage door opener, because like the rubber line split and the wires separated. So I just connected them wow. and then retaped them. So like that's so, not you know. Not a I learned before. at a very young age just that I'm I'm very accident prone. We've talked about this a million times. Mm -hmm. I tried to unhook my car stereo and then put a new one in, and I had a buddy who had done this before. This wasn't anything new for him. This was supposed to be like a 10 minute process. Not only did I electrocute myself, I completely missed the, missed the wiring system up, I had to have it professionally done. And then it cost me like $180 because I just destroyed all of the electrical work in this thing and it barely worked. And like I said, I electrocuted myself. So I'm an NA when it comes to electrical work because I know better than to even try it. If it has anything to do with electrical, I'm calling someone. I'm not even thinking about touching it. That's a good idea. Yeah, we we all know how that would end when it comes to me being accident prone. So, um, any other Madden ratings you guys had on top of your heads? Nope. All right, let's move on. We got the TCF top three, um, inspired by uh, my lifestyle lately because I'm on summer break and I play a lot of golf, and Zach plays a lot of golf. Um, so we're gonna do the TCF top three of golf stuff. Basically, this is kind of as open as it gets. Anything related to golf. Um, does anybody want to go first? I, I'll go first. It's the post round beer. It's number one. You get done you with the son round. Son of a. It's hot out. You just you're finally done with that eighteen, and you, you did well. You didn't do well either way. You're gonna go have that, that post round beer one, with the one. boys. Easiest one one ever. That's the yeah. only one one. Is that better than the first? Like you hit your tee shot and then you crack your first one. Is is the post round beer better than that? Mm-hmm. All right. Matt, would you like to go second? Uh, yes, I because I want to take this one away because I know this is probably the, the second best one. It's either the shot on 16, 17, or 18 that brings you back the next time. And yep. you guys know exactly what I'm talking about because yep. the round sucks. You're garbage. You're terrible. You can't make a putt. You can't make a – you can't hit a green. 
can't do anything right. All of a sudden, like 17, you hit one solid. You drop it within like three feet of the cup from like 170 out, and all of a sudden you're like feel like you're Tiger Woods, and you want to play again tomorrow. So yeah, that's the one that brings you back. It's that feeling, it. that shot. 100. percent Good, good call there, Maddie. Um, all right, I am going to go with golf carts. That's an easy. Golf carts are sweet. They're fun. You can whip them around. They're fast if you have the right one. I love golf carts, so I'm gonna go golf carts round one. Uh, my second one, I don't even care if anybody doesn't like this. Practice putting and chipping greens. You could, I could just spend, I could just go out there and play around with those. I want so, one in my backyard. Yeah, so everybody wants one. If anybody could or could, you know, afford it or had the area for it, everyone would put one in their yard. They're the best. Go get a little practice in. I love the the chipping and putting greens. Maddie, yeah, um, I'm gonna go with. Uh... I'm gonna go with sinking a long putt. Yep. Like nice. you know what? I, like it's another one of those where it's not always it's not always the best player, or the good player that like drills it. Sometimes you just get lucky and shit, and you drill like a thirty footer. And that feeling when you can track it and you're seeing it, and you know it's looking good, and you know it's on, and you got a chance, and it's like give me one more turn, and all of a sudden it does fall. It's like oh, that that feeling's phenomenal. And, Matt, even better than that, it, it kind of adjacent to it, is the one you don't line up because you're so far away. You're like, I'm just going to try and get it somewhere near the or hole. Yeah, too, that's like your best part of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the one Those where are... you're like, you know, you just slug the beer, you rip the one hitter, and all of a sudden you're walking up to the putter, and you're just like, fuck this, boom, 35-footer in the hole. There you go. Somehow that's it goes fun. in. Zach, yep. you got two. Uh, that's that split second on a par three where you think you may have a hole in one. You I mean, almost had one today. It's one of those times like you, you have a lot Especially of those you, you don't see the ball. Yeah, you, yeah. Have, you can't see the ball for sure. And then you're like, oh, no. But for yeah. that split second, you had a hole in one. That is true. Unless that's you're true. Booby's dad who's got a dose of them, huh? Yeah, no kidding. He's got like four of them. And then my last one is that perfect hit out of the sand. You have oh, you that, good that, choice. You were the sand. Bu- you did that a lot today. Sand uh, the bunker right next to the the um to the green, and you hit one right up there. Perfect little backspin right next to the hole. You you feel like you're professional. Good choice. Good choice. That doesn't right, happen. My last one. Often. Me. My either, last one is awesome playing feeling. a scramble. Playing in yep. a scramble. Four man yeah, scramble. That's a good one. Nothing better. It is a riot. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's blasting the ball as hard as they can. Everyone's taking chances because you're like, like a golf out on a Friday yeah. afternoon. Oh, it's just, it's the best. You're usually with a group of people that you like. It's usually just a really fun time. So best way to enjoy the game in my opinion. And when, especially when you get like a guy that can just put one out in the middle of the fairway, and everybody else can just yeah. hit it as hard as they can. You're swinging yeah, when, you, when your first sh- when your first shot's like two seventy five down the middle, and you're like, "All right, we're sitting good, everybody, air it out." That's that's the best. Yep, I'm gonna go with uh, chipping in, or like it, you basically using any club other than a putter to make the ball go into the hole. That's <laughs> yeah. an incredible feeling. <laughs> that's an awesome feeling. What else did we forget here? The cart, uh, or I'm sorry, the beer cart, cart girls. That's always a good. Well, like Maddie said, a nice, bonk. nice uh, bonk. Take um, it easy. Like I said, that ripping, was the, last ripping the one hitter once or uh, something. That's a good feeling. Going up to hit that drive right after that. The beer at the turn. That's always a solid one. Or like a turn when, hot when dog. You, I'm not going to say the distance of the drive, but when you hit a when you hit a good solid drive. And it takes that second kick up when it's on its yeah. good trajectory up, and then all of a sudden it pops up again. You know what I'm talking about? It takes that like little second upward. That feeling's really fun too when you know you really pop one, dude. That that that's a good one. Or when you play your slice right and you aim 85 yards to the left, and all of a sudden yep, it goes right back over the right down the middle of the fairway, just the way you planned it. When also you it straight, and you hit a house. That's not as fun. <laughs> <laughs> also, like when you hit a ball that you're like 99% sure he is either like out of bounds or out of play or whatever, and then you go up there and it's like safe by three inches. That's always a good feeling. Seeing Can interesting wildlife, this one? seeing gators and stuff. Like if you play like down in Florida or like certain yep. other coastal areas where you see some of the gators, like the swampy areas, or see some big ass gators on golf courses. That's pretty wild. So <laughs> also very scary. Goddamn alligator bit my hand off. Very scary. 
You got his eye. Well, I got his head. Mm-hmm. Anything else we're forgetting, fellas? I don't think so. Well, let, us know. On, let us know. On the first tee box before you've screwed anything up, That's and then the, the day is ahead of you. You got 18 holes. You got... I wonder if when, uh, you, you do con- when you do connect on a Gilmore Drive when you do the yes. happy Gilmore Drive and you actually get, when you actually get one. I wonder if uh, Pat Beals. I don't know if he golfs. If he'll have something to add to this. Somebody's got to have something good for us. So let us know what we forgot. There's probably a ton of them. Oh, the tee box game was the other one I had down. The little bonk game we play, um, where you hit it around the well, tee boxes. Take it easy, Matt. I saw your eyes light up. All right. <laughs> bonk. It's not like that, you dirty bird. But that's, that's purposely not driving past the red tees. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I actually played with a guy one time that we joked that he had to hit his neck shot with his pants around his ankles, and he did. So that was pretty hilarious. Yeah. Somebody actually <laughs> took the bait, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, boys, that was episode 104. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate everyone. Make sure you check out our Twitter, the main page at typical underscore Chicago, Facebook and Instagram. Type in typical Chicago fans. Give those pages a like and a follow. YouTube, make sure you subscribe there for all of our content in video form. Uh, Subscribe, rate, review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a follow there. Um, Make sure to join Zach, um, not join, but follow Zach on Twitter at ZLuliaTCF. And, of course, Maddie at schools underscore zero one. But, guys, most importantly, it's new summer. Um, It's time for some new clothes. Make sure you go to 26shirts.com, Chicago. Zach's got his shirt on. Um, You can't go wrong. They fit great. Um, They're great clothes. They help out great causes. Um, Go to 26shirts.com slash Chicago. Use promo code typical Chicago fans for 15% off of your order. It's a no brainer, guys. It's good clothes, good prices, and they're good people that help out good causes. And like I said, 15% off typical Chicago fans is your promo code. Pigoy just used it the other day to make sure the promo code still works. It sure does. So 15% off your order. Make sure you go check them out ASAP. Boys, anything else? I don't think so. Well, that was episode 104 of Typical Chicago Fans. We love you all. Peace. See you.